Oh, uh, hey, Goulash here, and welcome to another episode of... The Gulag. Yes, poor old Goulash is back, being forced by my master, Dr. Wolfula, to make content between his videos. What is Doc forcing me to cover now? Well, it might finally break me, as he's forcing me to review every other Tuesday an episode of the original Goosebumps TV series from the mid to late 90s, along with the books that inspired each episode. This has got to be the ultimate exercise in self-indulgence. No, wait. That would be reviewing all of the Scooby-Doo episodes. Uh... So, yeah, welcome to Goosebumps Goose Days. Yeah, I don't know, Dr. Wolfiel insists on puns for everything, especially Tuesday puns, evidently. Goose Day doesn't even work that well, uh, whatever. If you're somehow unfamiliar with Goosebumps, well, allow me to elucidate. Goosebumps is a series of children's horror books by R.L. Stein and published by Scholastic Inc. Begun in 1992, the series has sold over 400 million copies worldwide, only eclipsed by that nerd Harry Potter's book series. R.L. Stein has over 200 Goosebumps books to his name and is permanently established as the Stephen King of the playground. The Goosebumps books were huge in the 90s before Harry Potter took over. R.L. Stein pumped them out like crazy. The guy could apparently write a complete Goosebumps book in 10 days. Combine that with the amazing covers drawn by Tim Jacobus, and Goosebumps was the gateway drug for a lot of young readers back in the day. The original Goosebumps book series ran for 62 books and has had a host of spin-offs successors and imitators in the years since. Of course, success like that doesn't go unnoticed, so the burgeoning Fox network came a-knocking to adapt the books for its Fox Kids Saturday morning lineup as an anthology TV series. Goosebumps the TV series was a worthy counterpoint to Nickelodeon's popular long-running series Are You Afraid of the Dark, an anthology horror series also made in Canada like The Goosebumps Show. The Goosebumps TV series proved to be popular like the books, running for four seasons and spawning 74 Four episodes. 43 of those episodes were adaptations of books from the original series, so a majority of the original 62 books managed to be adapted in a fairly short time. Nearly everything essential to the Goosebumps franchise is covered in the show, which is why these vids will be using the TV series as an entryway. The books that these episodes are based on will still be covered in these videos, but the focus will be on the show because this is a visual medium and I need visuals. Because I'm using the show as an anchor, we begin Goosebumps Goose Days with the first episode of Goosebumps, a primetime Halloween special aired in late 1995 on Fox, an adaptation of The Haunted Mask, which was actually the 11th book in the series. The first book in the series, Welcome to Dead House, wasn't adapted until late into the second season of the show. Now, something I should mention right now. I have made a video on the Haunted Mask special already. In fact, it was the first video featuring me, made all the way back in 2012, so I'm pretty much covering it again. Honestly though, who fucking cares? Who cares? Let's talk Goosebumps. Before I get into the episode, I just want to point out that R.L. Stein himself actually hosted this special. He hosted a few other special episodes of the series, but was never a permanent fixture of the TV series, besides appearing from behind in the series' iconic intro that would be used after this special aired. It would have been neat to have this be a Twilight Zone for kids with a Rod Serling-like host, but I can understand not using the real R.L. Stein. In a few minutes, you're going to see one of my favorite stories come alive. He's very dry and deadpan. He's a lot more like Ben Stein than R.L. Stein in person. Viewers beware, you're in for a scare. The episode itself concerns a young girl named Carly Beth Caldwell, a mild-mannered middle school student who's a total coward, easily scared. It doesn't help either that the young lady is terrorized by her quote-unquote friends, the inseparable bullies Chuck and Steve, who go out of their way to frighten Carly Beth or just infringe on her rights as a student in general. <laughs> Carly is flanked by her best friend, Sabrina, who doesn't really offer much support to her clearly distressed friend, instead offering some support to the boys who torment Carly Beth. Last weekend at your house, they pretended they were prowlers. That wasn't funny. I'm sorry. What a bitch. Carly Beth's life at home is not ideal either. She has a doting, overprotective mother who shelters Carly Beth and idolizes the girl to the point of making a creepy plaster of Paris statue of her daughter. It's kind of creepy, Mom. Meanwhile, Carly Beth's own brother, Noah, acts as an at-home version of Chuck and Steve, scaring the girl in what is to be her own Halloween costume, a duck. Boy, this girl is, well, she's a bit of a pussy. 
With Halloween on the horizon, the premiere date for scares, Carly Beth no longer wishes to be a target, intending to finally be frightening herself and maybe get some revenge. You gotta start revenge early in life. Carly Beth embarks on a quest to the local recently opened novelty shop to find a Halloween mask that will strike fear into her bullies and meets inside the creepy, scarred shop owner of ambiguous nationality. I'd like to buy a mask for Halloween, please. We're closed. While taking a look at the man's mask stock, one of which looks eerily familiar, the easily frightened girl for some reason is drawn into checking out the shop's back room, which honestly looks like a meth lab. It's here where the girl finds a row of Resident Evil monster masks. One of these masks in particular catches Carly Bess eye, but the mask shop owner catches the girl trespassing and declares that these masks are not for sale. Are these masks, they're so real looking. Take the responsibility. Chuck and Steve would just die. <laughs> the girl insists that she must have this mask to successfully frighten Chuck and Steve. So Carly Beth just uh, takes it while also giving the guy $30. What a steal, literally. Now, I should point out that in the book, the shop owner eventually relents and just sells the mask to Carly Beth without a fuss, but, you know, that's not exactly a great way to build tension. From here, Carly Beth dons the mask, which proves effective in scaring her younger brother, seemingly changing her mannerisms in the process to something more monstrous, while also being hard to take off. <laughs> Clad in black and wielding her mother's statuette on a pike, Carly Beth heads out in the October evening, finally the one doing the terrorizing. The Haunted Mask adaptation is a highlight of the original TV series, making the good choice of starting things off with a standout book. This 42 minute long TV episode is mostly faithful to the original book with only a few minor changes. Early scenes are shuffled around a bit or slightly changed in one scene, a mostly unnecessary science fair scene was removed completely. The ending of the book is changed in ways that both make it an improvement and also slightly worse, but I'll get into that later. The original book also contains some pop culture references that were omitted on the show, like one kid was actually described as dressed as Freddy Krueger, and Sabrina's cat costume is actually supposed to be a Catwoman costume. This is TV, so the pop culture references aren't as easy to fly by. The biggest difference with the TV special in the book is in how Carly Beth presents herself while wearing the mask. This is called the Haunted Mask, so it goes without saying that the mask Carly Beth wears quickly possesses her and causes her to perform mischief. In the show, it's playing for a seven-year-old bracket, so it's pretty tame and mostly just Carly Beth being a bit of a bitch. You better watch what you say to me if you know it's good for you. <laughs> scaring people like Chuck and Steve. In the book, Carly Beth actually becomes violent, at one point briefly strangling Sabrina and even threatening a mother and her small children. This wouldn't have flown on TV for kids, but without that darker stuff, it doesn't quite get across Carly Beth's transformation into an actual monster. That's the other thing. The adaptation is limited by 90s effects, so while the mask itself is pretty cool looking as a mask, in the book, Carly Beth's mask is supposed to gradually shift into becoming an actual living monster head that's spreading across her skin. It's a bit like the symbiote from Spider-Man. The show mostly just has to imply this transformation and make do with just making the mask slimy as it becomes grafted to Carly Beth's body. Catherine Long, who plays Carly Beth in the special, does a good job playing the part of a sympathetic, vulnerable young girl and does what she can playing the monster later. Bye-bye, scaredy cat. Bye-bye. Though, in the book, her voice is described as actually different, more monstrous, while Long does the voice herself with a bit of a rasp, which probably made things a little less scary for kids. Still, the show doesn't quite get across the transformation so well. She mostly seems like the same person, but with a mask stuck to her head. Hey, don't look at me like that. Another thing from the book that was removed in the special was Carly Beth's issues with her face, feelings of ugliness that the special downplayed in favor of focusing on her cowardice. Body dysmorphia mixes well with the concept of a mask transforming you into a monster and makes the original book pretty sophisticated for a Goosebumps book. Now, just because Carly Beth in the special doesn't have evident body issues, that doesn't mean the theme is gone entirely. When Carly Beth finds that she is unable to remove the mask, she returns to the novelty shop for help removing it and maybe even getting a refund. I cannot remove that mask. You see, the masks are not actually masks, but faces called the unloved ones. They weren't ugly in the beginning. They were beautiful. 
The body image issues in the book were channeled into the shop owner who hated his own face and wanted to replace it with a beautiful face of his own making. I did not love myself. I made these faces to hide behind them, to hide my faults. But each face eventually warped into monstrous faces infected by his insecurities. This motivation is missing in the original book, making the shop owner much more of an interesting character in the TV adaptation. Here's where things get goofy though. Carly Beth is chased by the unloved ones as she tries to find a symbol of love to defeat them. And the effect is about as good as you'd expect floating mask can look on a 90s kids show. They honestly look like some kind of weird Windows 95 screensaver. As cheesy as it all looks, this finale is at least more suspenseful than in the actual book. In the book, Carly Beth just leaves the statue of her head lying around in a random spot, but in the show, she actually buries it in a cemetery and has to dig it up. It's a little bit more of a suspenseful situation. Simultaneously, how Carly Beth defeats the unloved in the book is more abstract, where she puts her statue on like a mask and it becomes her original face. Can't really do that with 90s effects, so she just waves the statue around as the unloved leave and the mask just comes off through the power of her mother's unconditional love. A symbol of love. Ugh, what is this? Barney the dinosaur with the feel-good messages? Well, Carly Beth returns home safe and sound to her loving mother, but Noah emerges wearing the cursed mask. Oh, shit. Goosebumps the Haunted Mask is a hallmark of the franchise, making for both a solid first episode of a show and a good place to start reading Goosebumps. There are a lot of classic Goosebumps villains, but I think the Haunted Mask itself is the most unique to its franchise conceptually. Now, these are children's books, and I recommend reading stuff at a higher level if you're an adult, but I gotta say, even though the TV special is good in a cheesy way, I still say this is a case where you should try to read the book before watching the special. Special. You're not missing out on much by only watching Goosebumps episodes and skipping the books. I mean, it's not high-grade literature. But this is a case where you should give the book a read to have a feel for the series. Reading a Goosebumps book only takes about two hours anyway. Regardless, the Haunted Mask book and episode is among the best examples of the series. I give Goosebumps the Haunted Mask five drops of monster blood out of five. Hey, I'm rating these on their own merits, okay? <laughs> Oh, before I go, I have a full audio reading of the book covered in this video that's available to ghoulish friend supporters of Dr. Wolfula's Patreon. Link in the description for part one of the reading. Support the channel if you'd like to hear a children's book read by a zombie. Anyway, I've been Goulash. See you all next time, you fucking weirdos. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, like it. And if you loved it, subscribe for more and click the bell icon to find out when my latest vids and streams go live. Want a double dose of Dr. Wolfula? Donate to my Patreon and you'll get bonus content for supporting the channel, including exclusive movie streams and commentaries weekly. Be sure to also give me a visit in the free Pop Ace app to hang out in a virtual Wolfula, complete with horror quizzes and bonus feeds. Link in the description to download for iOS and Android. I'd like to give a special thanks to my true Wolfulite supporters on Patreon and my channel memberships for their pledges. Their support helps keep the channel going after all these years. Thank you, guys. Alrighty, Dr. Wolfula signing out. See you all next time.